All right. Uh, so as always, uh, really happy to be a part of this uh, Angel B webinar sessions. Uh, it's it's always quick, fast, and you know, basically trying to get to the point of what we deliver. So really happy to be here again, trying to present uh, our data protection solutions, especially geared towards healthcare customers. So uh, a quick introduction. My name is Shiva Raja. I'm a technical solutions architect at Haiku. I've been with the company for almost four years now, uh, but my overall experience uh, purely is on data center protection, data center monitoring solutions. So again, I hope the session to be extremely interactive at the same time. So if you have any questions, please feel free to chat, you know, type them on the chat and I'll do everything I can to answer those questions for you. <clears throat> so that being said, uh, one of the common things, uh, or one of the things that I actually wanted to start with, especially uh, focused towards healthcare-based applications, uh, and the, the need for data protection basically stems from one of the most three fundamental uh, ongoing issues. The number one is human error, right? Especially when it comes to uh, applications or when it comes to uh, end users basically working with these applications. Um, these can be like accidental, truly non-malicious, uh, you know, error, you know, user errors that results from, you know, for, you know, misconfiguration, wrong installation, deployment, or even programming based errors. And that can actually lead to data corruption. And I've seen most of the times, not just healthcare, but across the spectrum, the need for a solid data protection, especially when it comes to file or folder level recoveries stem from these unforeseen errors, right? Uh, or unforced human errors. So uh, with that being said, uh, that is one of the biggest items or that one of the biggest issues that we also see in the healthcare industry. Uh, the second most, uh, most prevalent, or I would say it's slowly rising towards that, you know, most, you know, uh, a common form of an issue is uh, insider attacks, right? When, especially when, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, systems being compromised, it could be, it I mean, you basically don't have any external attack. It's basically an inside user, a disgruntled employee, uh, basically trying to, you know, delete the information or corrupt the data or encrypt the data so that it's not accessible. Uh, and, and what do, you know, administrators do to basically bring the applications within that business to be up and running instantaneously. So that, that has been one of the most second most common problems that we've been facing. And the third, and again, Ron, this is something that you've mentioned as well, is ransomware attacks. <laughs> but one of the most, I mean, I, I'm sure you folks would remember, uh, like three years ago, when, when, when this was, when the whole prevalence of ransomware attacks were being talked about, we were basically saying that, hey, you know, like healthcare industries, like one of the one of the most vulnerable industries out there, which are basically being targeted by these ransomware attacks. But in this day and age, oh boy, oh boy, it's there is no, I would say, no organization that is not, you know, a vulnerable, or not like not not accessible or not targeted for a you know a typical ransomware attack. I mean, when I basically do demos to my customers, healthcare or non-healthcare customers, they always, I mean, basically backup security becomes like one of the most stable uh, discussion points. And we basically talk about what we have to do uh, for those customers, assuming that the primary environment gets compromised, how do they basically ensure that their backups are always secure and how do they go about recovering their entire infrastructure from a ransomware attack. So the sad part is like, it has become a new normal, but it is what it is. At the end of the day, we have to be prepared. We have to basically secure ourselves from these unforeseen ransomware or malware attacks. So with that being said, uh, I just wanted to go through the most common requirements. The first uh, set of items that I talked about are the most high level requirements that, that I've seen amongst uh, healthcare customers. But from those requirements, uh, or, or the high level uh, you know uh, pr you know problems but from those problems the following are one of the most key requirements that we have often seen amongst our healthcare customers and healthcare prospects where we are trying to sell our solution right number one is backup fortification like what do you exactly or what what is what does a solution really do to ensure that your backups are totally fortified from your entire production environment. Your base, it's basically the concept of vaulting your backups in a secure location so that if your production environment gets compromised, your backups are still safe and the backups are still usable and they can be used to recover from a recent attack or even from a data corruption or from an insider user attack. 
right? So that is the number one thing that we always talk about uh, when it comes to backup fortification. Uh, is the data encrypted at source and at the destination in the wire? Uh, do we have the ability to segment all the networks? Do we restrict all of the backdoor access by disabling SSH? All those kind of things basically deal with the overall backup fortification, ensuring that your backups are siloed in a secure location. Number two is assuring that the, you know, uh, the user is basically validated and has access to uh, resources that that specific uh, user is authorized to. So this basically can be done in several, several layers. I mean, we basically deal with multi-factor authentication to multi-tenancy to, uh, you know, to ensuring that, you know, we have a strict role-based access control in place where users can only have access to a certain set of resources that they're authorized to work on. So this is basically the second set of requirements our customers always ask where when a solution is deployed, do you have the ability to bifurcate the resource assignment in a way that it's only, you know, it's fully secured, it's fully, uh, you know, bulletproof to ensure that the users, the respective users have only access to their environment and they don't step into other people's environment, which could result in a potential security breach, right? So that's number two. Number three is overall immutability. And this is exactly what I was talking about, right? Basically preserving your backups in the siloed location. But there is a catch there. You know, what if a malware or an inside user basically manages to breach through these security walls? What if, you know, even despite, you know, hiding all these passwords, despite preventing, you know, all of the access to your backups, even from your production environment, what if, you know, someone manages to break through those walls? And that's where immutability comes into picture because immutability basically states that regardless of what happens, your backups are still safe. I mean, no one can basically delete those backups, encrypt, or even you know, uh, you know, modify those backups or corrupt those backups in any way until the expiration time of those backups are met. Right. So that basically is a hardcore compliance standard that basically fits into your your HIPAA requirements where your backups are going to stay immutable regardless of what it is. Even a super administrator won't be able to delete them. Number four comes down to RPOs, right? Uh, the frequency of how, you know, how often would you like to protect your primary environment? Like, uh, is it one hour or is it a four hours? Like, are you able to keep up with the SLAs of your backup to ensure that your, you know, your primary data is always protected without any problems, right? Uh, this is basically to ensure that you know every uh, organization has its own requirements in terms of uh, you know RPOs and RTOs, and we need to have a solution in place whether these RPOs or RTOs are being met, and if not, the end users need to be alerted on the fact that the RPOs are not being met, and and uh, you know provide them with a, a required set of actions that has to be taken to fix that issue, and that basically comes down to the overall you know, policy definition of how you go about defining the data protection of your healthcare resources, be it with regards to, you know, on-prem backups or doing backups to cloud, enabling the whole overall worm feature using immutability, like basically defining the policies on how your backups need to be done that basically translate to your organizational SLAs. And last but not the least, no backup is good if your restores don't work. So it also comes down to whether your backups are good enough to be recovered and if so, how long does it take for my organization to be up and running when I'm being impacted by a ransomware attack or by a you know, inside user, or if there is like an accidental data corruption, like how long does it take for my, you know, uh, your, my EHR system to be up and running or how long does it take for my PACs or VNA systems to be up and running? Like what is the, you know, the recovery time objective? So th that is like one of the key requirements that are always being focused by our customers. So. With that being said, with that, you know, with, with, with specifying all these high level requirements, these are the most common challenges that we have seen amongst our customers. The first one is we all know that healthcare basically comes with a huge checklist of compliance requirements, but it shouldn't just be a checklist in my opinion, because when you basically go through just checking every option, there is a chance that you know you're just focused on ensuring that the checklist is being met, but the you know, but the efficiency or the performance could be compromised, right? So the objective over here is to basically be fully detailed with regards to checking every checkbox within your compliance list, but at the same time, be efficient and be high performance, right? Make sure that your, you know, your, your data protection solution doesn't get compromised 
uh, you know, in terms of performance or efficiency, just to make sure that it's secure. Number two is, you know, it's not just about you doing file or folder level restores. It always translates into, you know, your, your, you know, basically ensuring that your recover, your restores are business ready, basically ensuring that you have the ability to restore your backups to a production ready state so that you, I mean, your end users don't feel that impact, especially when they're, when your infrastructure is, you know, being hit by a ransomware attack or when it's being hit by a minor, uh, you know, a, a user, uh, user error. And in addition to that, uh, it, it also comes down to preserving IT resources in terms of deploying the solution. I mean, you, it shouldn't cost you an arm and a leg at the end of the day where you, you basically have to, you know, uh, deploy too many uh, virtual appliances or, or that require huge amounts of compute memory and storage, or it basically takes up a lot of real estate. And that actually basically talks about how to keep your costs down. And it's not just about ensuring that your solution is efficient or high performing, high, high performing, but it, it also should ensure that it doesn't eat into your production budget. At the end of the day, I'm a huge believer of backups and data protection needs to be cost efficient and cheaper than your production environment. Because if your data protection is expensive than your production environment, trust me guys, you're doing something wrong there because that's not data protection at the end of the day. It's something else, right? So these are the most common challenges that I've seen. And this is exactly what we do to help our customers, right? We basically try to showcase the fact that our solution is extremely simple to begin with, right? I mean, we have seen several of our customers simply download our solution for uh, proof of concept purposes, where they basically deploy the entire solution to a production ready state in a matter of minutes. I've seen customers do this at an average of 30 to 45 minutes like that, right? And in addition to that, it's not just about being simple or easy to use. The, the solution in itself has an underlying ability to be scalable based on the customer's environment. And this basically comes from a solutions microservices architecture where we have the ability to either expand or shrink based on the customer's environment. And that also basically deals with how secure your backups are. It, it not, it's not only about you know, ensuring that your backups are taken on time, ensure that your, your RPOs are being met, but also ensuring that your backups are secure so that when your primary infrastructure is taken down, your backups are always safe. And this is basically achieved by true air gap backup security and immutable backups. And that basically leads to our fourth point where we talk about how well do we integrate with your underlying platform. Could be your VMware, it could be Nutanix, or it could be Google Cloud or Azure. How does a data protection solution truly integrate with the underlying platform hold, hosting your healthcare applications to ensure that when we do these backups, you don't have any performance issues? It's, I mean, in, in, a, in an ideal world, a backup and a recovery, or especially a backup process, should be should basically be truly invisible. Like nobody should know that something like that is happening. It's basically an SLA that you define. And once you apply it, that's it. I mean, the entire process should be invisible to the end user and they shouldn't, they shouldn't even know any, or notice any performance impact. And that is only done through native platform integration. And last but not the least, it shouldn't break your bank. At the end of the day, when you're investing in a true data protection solution, it should always be cost efficient. It should have the ability to leverage your existing infrastructure and at the same time be highly efficient and, and, and doesn't compromise on your performance. And, and that is the true hallmark of a cost efficient data protection solution. So I'd like to go through some quick examples here. So uh, we do have one of our healthcare uh, customers that, uh, for obvious reasons, I cannot uh, share the name here, but I can give you some hints. This is uh, one of the huge uh, healthcare customers based out of Massachusetts and they provide uh, a web-based EHR solution. So that should be a hint good enough. Um, so this particular customer had a huge requirement of moving all of their workloads to Google Cloud. Uh, they did have some, you know, they, they basically wanted to be, uh, they, they, they're pretty, it's, it's a typical example of a hybrid environment where they'd still want to retain, retain their on-prem infrastructure, but they wanted to move majority of their workloads to Google Cloud. And one of the serious challenges that they were facing was like, they were basically uh, plagued with all of these customized scripts uh, to maintain these uh, snapshots of their Google Cloud platform uh, and, and, 
and and reliability was a constant issue because whenever an API basically gets updated in the platform, the script had to be updated, and and it was it was basically a painful process to go through. And on top of it, the staff was extremely lean. You didn't have a lot of people to manage these, uh, you know, these scripts that was basically helping them to move their workloads. And guess what? Your compliance is obviously going to be strict. I mean, that basically comes with the territory. Right. So with that being said, what did we do? We basically stepped in. Uh, we helped this customer. We actually showcased how we can help them to move their workload seamlessly to, uh, to their Google Cloud environment, provide them a, a backup as a service with native integration on Google Cloud that provides a single pane of glass for all of their Google Cloud and GKE workloads. And guess what, guys? Snapshot, you know, the, the whole cost savings by reducing the usage of snapshots was immense with this specific account because uh, as you already know, snapshots are not cheap because they are basically stored within the primary environment, but Haiku's backups are always stored within your uh, you know, cheap and deep Google Cloud storage buckets. Again, when I say cheap and deep, they're still high performance, by the way. So uh, by, by providing this shift from snapshots to storing backups on GCS buckets, I mean, we basically showcased a huge ROI for this specific customer. And right now they're one of the most uh, one of our happy uh, customers, especially in the healthcare sector. So that's number one, right? Number two is, uh, this is, uh, again, for obvious reasons, I cannot share the name, but I can give you some hints. This customer uh, is uh, basically one of our healthcare customers that uh, manufacture medical devices and, and, and basically deliver fertility solutions. Uh, and this specific customer also had a, almost like a similar uh, use case uh, in my previous uh, 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 case study where they did want to protect their on-prem workloads, but uh, but they actually want to do backups to uh, Azure, and they also want to basically perform migration to Azure. I mean, previously it was Google Cloud, but in this case it was Azure. So again, the same set of problems. I mean, they still had to do this in a manual fashion, which means they had to basically have their own custom scripts, uh, basically have uh, manual management of all of their sta snapshots. Again, uh, they, they were not blessed with a huge team to manage their infrastructure and cursed with, you know, uh, you know, a lot of scripts and API changes. So if you have to keep up with all of those changes with an extremely stringent compliance, you know where I'm getting to. I mean, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be like an easy day or it's not going to be an easy thing to work with. And again, just like we helped with the previous customer here, we basically helped them to reduce the overall management cost. I mean, in this specific case, the customers were really happy with the, the level of simplicity and scalability we provided because we literally reduced their management to an extent where they really didn't have to care about backups anymore. I mean, this is probably one of those good examples where we basically made backups as truly or data protection as a truly invisible process where they really didn't even have to care about it. And we also provided them proactive customer support, meaning that if there are any backup or restore failures, we were the ones who basically called them and, and, and we notified them saying that the issues were fixed. So, so at the end of the day, this was like a win-win situation for our customer. And it actually provided them the confidence because if they, they actually had some interest to become a true multi-cloud solution, they were also looking into Google Cloud. And we basically provided them the assurance that you know, they actually have the ability to move their workloads from Azure. And if they wanted to host their workloads on AWS or on Google, uh, we will always be there to help them. So with that being said, I think the reasons are pretty obvious. Why is Haiku relevant for healthcare? Because we deliver true impact-free backups of all of your healthcare applications, uh, be it with regards to uh, hosted on VMs or on BDI-based workloads, because we integrate with every platform and deliver snapshot level backups, which are application consistent. And speaking of application consistency, we do have a very good track record of protecting uh, EHR and EMR solutions, uh, be it with regards to on-prem or on public cloud infrastructure. And our solution by default are efficient and scalable. I mean, that is exactly how we define it, our, our designed our solution. And that is one of the biggest advantages of uh, being a young company because we basically redesigned our we basically designed our entire architecture from scratch. And we basically have uh, avoided all the common mistakes of your typical, you know, contemporary backup vendors and data protection vendors. And that is exactly why our solution can offer a truly scale out solution for PAX and DNA related workloads. And in addition to that, uh, when it comes to recovery, we can actually offer quick 
uh, you know, absolutely fast recovery of all of your EHR, EMR workloads, uh, packs and BNA files, and even BDI based workloads. And we can always assure that all of your backup, backup data is truly secure, meaning that only the authorized users will be able to access that data with full fledged audit login. And in addition to that, we also provide you full, uh, full fledged air gap and you know, immutable backups to protect your data from ransomware attacks. And that's pretty much about it, right? At the end of the day, we offer compliance at every level. We keep track of you know, the way your data is being backed up. We keep track of all of the alerts, I mean, uh, all of the events, and we basically notify our end users ensuring that all of their data is backed up and they're staying compliant. So our solution is not just about being efficient, but it also serves as a true compliance monitoring solution, especially when it comes to uh, you know, performing backups of your uh, healthcare applications. So one of the last things that I want to showcase is this is one of our screenshots. I always, I'm a more of a demo person, but given the amount of time that I have, I just want to stick with slides. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we always deliver a full fetch single pane of glass uh, and the look and feel of our UI is so easy and intuitive. Uh, it's extremely easy to use. I mean, uh, when it comes to uh, deploying your solution within your on-prem infrastructure or deploying or subscribing to our solution within your Google Cloud, Azure or AWS, it's just, you know, it's, it's extremely simple and straightforward. So please visit us at tryhaiku.com. Uh, we'll be more than happy to basically answer any, any of your questions all you have to do is basically send us, you know, your questions or queries to info at haiku.com and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you. And if you'd like to have or see any of, you know, our product demos, just go to www.haiku.com slash demo haiku. And if you want to have more information about our solution, if you want to, you know, check out our solution, please visit us at www.haiku.com. So that is pretty much about it from my end. Ron, any questions on the chat or? Well, once again, Krishna had some questions. I'll let you address them in terms of the granular nature of how Haiku complements snapshots, replaces them. Is it on each virtual machine? Is it on instance? It's a pretty technical question, <clears throat> which is great but I, I'm going to let you just deal with that directly. If you see that in the chat there. Yep, sure. I, I actually do see that. Yes. Um, so do you want me to answer that right now, Ron, or do you want me to? Yeah, why don't you want to answer that right now? Sure, sure. And then also um, include in the chat your email to Krishna so you can follow up directly. So, okay. Yeah, sure. So I, let me just provide a high level answer. So, uh, when it comes to a snapshot, it really doesn't matter if it's an on-prem or it's cloud. The snapshots are always on a VM level. Uh, that's exactly how snapshots are offered from a specific platform vendor. And your question is very, very valid. So if you wanted to protect a database, how do snapshots really help if they're on a VM level? The answer is, how do you quiet those snapshots? So what we basically have is we do have inbuilt solutions that help you to quiet these databases in an application consistent manner before we invoke or before we create a snapshot. So what that means is by default, any snapshot is a, a crash consistent copy. In this case, an a snapshot would be an application consistent copy. So we basically ensure that we quest all of your databases, ensure that all of the rights and the rights are committed to the disk. And we basically take a snapshot only after that. And that basically ensures that all of your databases, all of your applications are protected in, a, in an application consistent manner. Uh, and, and I'm sure Krishna, I mean, I'm sure there are gonna be even more questions. We can definitely follow up offline uh, via email. So I'll, I'll okay. do that. 